A'udzu billahi minasy syaithanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Allah, the uncreated creator, the king of mankind, the judge of mankind, the judge of uh, the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. I seek the peace and the blessings of Allah on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the seal of all mankind, the best example for humanity to follow. On that note, I welcome everyone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I was invited to talk about my journey to Islam. Inshallah, I will be sharing the story. And uh, at the end of uh, the story, I will look at questions from viewers. And inshallah, I will answer the ones I can, inshallah. Uh, I was born and raised as a Christian in a Christian home and uh, being in the church. At some point, I started to read the Bible because I found the biblical stories fascinating. You know, the story of David, of Joshua, of uh, Gideon, and uh, talk of so many of them. Talk of so many of them. So, I started to read the Bible, and uh, at some point, I started to start reading the Bible from the book of Genesis. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I read the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation about four times cover to cover to say and uh, reading the Bible created doubt in me and uh, I started asking questions questions that uh, you know were pertinent I asked the pastors and evangelist questions and uh, at some point some began to think that is he possessed is he running mad is he being brainwashed like that I I cannot bring myself to shouting while praying you know i go to i used to go to christ apostolic church cac and there we are to you know shout while talking uh, while praying rather in jesus name oh god father and all this and that so i was wondering because jesus said that if you want to pray do not pray like they pray go to a corner of your room and pray because your father that hears in secrets can answer you in public so i i i, I wanted to live by biblical standards i wanted to do things based on the bible i was asking the pastors i said fine you know at a point in time we we have to say that jesus christ is a god but when you now say jesus christ is god and uh he came from heaven and he came to earth. So, where then was he in heaven? Was heaven empty? Heaven had no God or maybe he had to God that split? So, questions like that, there were really no answers. So, sometimes in uh, 2013, I was on a uh, Facebook post. I was from uh, posted by N.A. Ahmad Jami Ima. I saw some Muslims who were, I saw some Muslims who were, you know, debating a Christian, and uh, I wasn't really too pleased with it, because the way they have been answering the uh, Christian and uh, asking her questions, I, I, I felt she was not up to standard, so I was like, okay, let me come in, I think I know, you know, what the Bible says and I have covered a great part of the Bible so when I started talking uh, answering them they asked some questions that I 
I the, 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 there was no way I could dodge them. And uh, as a person, uh, I I really hate to be insincere to say you know it's it's just on conv uh, on, on conviction. So this is what I believe. This is what you believe. If you have any superior argument, why don't you bring it to me and let me see if I will agree with it? You know. So I cannot just say what is right and decide to just go with what is wrong just because of whims and desires. So as they asked me, they said, "Where in the Bible is the Bible written? Do we have the word Bible in the Bible?" So I tried answering, but I couldn't answer them. And then they asked again, was Jesus Christ a Christian? Was Abraham a Christian? Was Ismail a Christian? Was Isaac a Christian? Was Jacob a Christian? Was Moses a Christian? Was Joshua a Christian? You know, was John the Baptist a Christian? And then I looked and I was like, these were people who never believed Jesus Christ. To have died for their sins, they never believed, you know, he came to redeem them, you know, from the cause of the sin. They did not believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and personal Savior. He came to die for them. So I was like, wow, if they were not Christians and they are definitely not in hell, then so why then Christianity to say when Jesus Christ never ever mentioned the word Christianity to say? So Alhamdulillah, I started studying you know making individual researches and i started to engage pastors in discussions so i asked them questions and i told them about my doubt well many of them tried to answer the questions but i knew when they answer and when they are really getting it wrong and uh, one of those things i couldn't get to you know agree with is uh, the concept of our trinity that the father is god the son is god and the holy spirit is god and uh, i i begin to wonder are these three gods one in person or they are three different entities you know working together i do not understand and uh, the argument is always that there are three in one are the three in one if you say the Father is God, the Son is God, and if the Son is the Prince of Peace, then does that make the Father King of Peace? And if he is the King of Peace, why is it that no one calls him the King of Peace? And if God could have been the Prince of Peace, and then there should be a King because there is no Prince without the King, and does that make someone greater than God, Jesus? And you say that Jesus Christ is God, you know, the Holy Spirit is God, and same as the Father. But John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I began to wonder that, oh, okay, if Jesus Christ, if he were God, so can we just say, for Jesus so loved the world, that he sent himself, or for God so loved the world, that he sent himself. Likewise, the book of Matthew 27 verse 46 and uh, the book of Matthew or uh, the book of Mark 15 verse 34 where Jesus was said to have said Eli Eli Lama Sabachthani my God my God why have you forsaken me and then was well, Jesus Christ God he could have just said myself myself why have I forsaken myself and uh, who knows that there is a God you know that forsakes another God so it is just preposterous, you know, irrational and uh, so, so illogical that I cannot come to, you know, agree with them. So these are the questions I asked and uh, I got no answers to say. And uh, coming back to the Bible, you know, being a Christian, I have been made to believe that the Bible is uh, the word of God. So now that I say the Bible is the word of God, fine. When I started making my researches, I found out that we have so many Bibles to say. Now, before I even going to the differences in the books, look at, we have the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, we have the King James Version of the Bible, we have the New World Translation, we have the New Life Translation, we have NIV, we have so many of them, we have the New World Translation of the Bible. Now, these Bibles 
they have so many differences you know getting to the preface of uh, the revised standard version of the bible it says that the king james version has so many grave defects and these errors are so many and so serious as to call for a revision and one would wonder this bible king james version that is known globally is said to have contained errors that needs you know to be revised hence the revised standard version of the bible that over 16 verses was unceremoniously expunged from it so who is removing and who is adding to the books and uh, if truly the bible is the word of god then we have to ask that which of these bibles are you talking about when you check the book of john chapter 1 verse 1 of uh, the king james bible it says uh in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word himself was god but when you check the newer translation it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was a god a god small letter g-o-d so these are glaring differences and anyone who is a sincere truth truth seeker will not will not just you know sleep and say oh this is what he wants to do or he just wants to agree with this you know discrepancies contradictions so uh, now you get to you know denominations and uh, you find out that the protestant bible has 66 books the catholic bible has 73 books there are other bibles that have 81 books 83 books as 30 books like the charismatic version and then we wonder so if we were to say that the bible uh, is the word of god and we would ask which of the bibles so making me conclude that we cannot even say the bible because we have nothing like the Bible. What we have is a Bible. Because the Bibles are too much and uh, they have, you know, these differences. So I cannot start to, or I cannot continue to agree with this. So when I look at Muslims, I say, fine. You, you, you claim that Allah says that uh, anyone who seeks any other religion apart from Islam, it will not be accepted uh, from them. Okay. And then you say again that Allah says that all you will believe in Quran 3102, all you will believe do not die except you are Muslims submitting to the will of Allah. And then you say again that the only religion with Allah is Islam. So in a world where we have so many religions, you know, we have Hinduism, we have Buddhism, we have Shintoism, we have Confucianism, we have Islam, we have Christianity, and so many religions. And then how can Islam claim to have been the only religion from God you know the only religion acceptable so I started studying you know I took up the Quran I started to read and mashallah mashallah alhamdulillah I, 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 I think I found my questions you know one of those things that uh, is so difficult for a Christian to do away with to say is believing that jesus christ was not crucified you know christmas was just celebrated and this is it it it, 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 it is accepted globally so why would anyone say in the name of his religion that jesus christ was not crucified as in quran 4 that they both said they would they have killed Isa, son of mary messenger of allah indeed they killed him not it is only a conjecture that they follow so i started to study and uh one of those things that you know made me to start to agree that he was not crucified was the book of psalm 37 verse 28 the bible says that god loves the just and he does not forsake his righteous ones he loves the just and he does not forsake his righteous ones and uh the book of matthew 27 verse 46 says that jesus christ said Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then, if Jesus Christ was just and righteous, could God have forsaken him? And even if Jesus Christ was God, how could he have asked that why God forsook him? Why should he ask? Then he should have been asking himself, I said, myself, myself, why have I forsaken myself? So if Jesus was just, he could not have been forsaken. And if he was truly forsaken on that cross, 
that means he was not righteous and if jesus christ was not righteous at the point of crucifixion what then is the fate of over one billion christians we have in the world today number one so number two you have jesus christ in the book of matthew 20 verse 39 to 40 you know, the bible said jesus christ went into further bow down and start praying to god and then jesus christ said oh god if you will let this cup pass over me so a muslim when we pray you know we have to pray with the belief that well if it is good for us allah will and if allah intends something better for us you know allah will grant us something better so it is not a thing of us that allah should answer whatever prayer or whatever our request is so he prayed like a muslim he said ensure allah allah if you will let this cup of death pass over me so this only tells us that he wasn't even designed to die he wasn't designed because when he designed to die he could not have asked or he could not have requested that oh god let this cup pass over me if you will so if he was designed to die and uh, maybe he intentionally came to die for our sins he could have just said oh god do not let this cup pass over me or oh, i have come to fulfill my duty but he never did and then the book of hebrew 5 or 7 now said that jesus christ when he was in the days of pains and anguish you know he cried unto god who could save him and god saved him from that which he feared that's in the christian's bible for god's sake so if jesus christ was answered you know where did he cry to god in tears and pains and anguish he cried in the garden of gethsemane where he said oh god if you will let this cup pass over me and his prayers was an were, uh, were answered so he could not have died and if you say someone came to die for the sins of humanity he must have been sent to humanity for jesus christ to have died for the sins of humanity he must have been sent to humanity now in the book of matthew chapter 10 verse 5 to 6 jesus christ told his disciples and he said do not go into the house of the gentiles nor into the house of the samaritans but go you into the house of the lost sheep of israel in the book of matthew 15 verse 24 jesus christ said again that i was sent only you know it was he stated it categorically you know very very specific i was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of israel so this 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 was coming from jesus christ not from lucas bashir not from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said he was sent only to the lordship of israel he wasn't sent to nigeria he wasn't sent to india he wasn't sent to america he wasn't sent to england he wasn't sent to scotland he wasn't sent to afghanistan he wasn't sent to australia he wasn't sent to guinea you know only to the israelites and that's why he said the disciples will be on the same throne with him judging the 12 tribes of the throne of israel of the tribes of israel to say so if he was not sent to humanity how could he have died for the sins of humanity more so the bible says in the book of deuteronomy 24 verse 16 and also the book of ezekiel 18 verse 20 it says that the son shall not die for the sins of the father and the father shall not die for the sins of the son so how come jesus could have died for the sins of humanity and uh, a pertinent question is uh, if a christian who claims to love jesus who claims to revive jesus who claims that jesus christ is his own personal savior if we have a christian that was alive two thousand years ago when according to them jesus was being beaten disgraced and shamed you know if he if it was in his uh you know power to set jesus free would he set jesus christ free or would he say go and kill him for my sins he would definitely have said jesus oh my beloved oh my love oh my savior please go in peace and then if he would do that how much more a supposed loving father could he have just said let his son a begotten son in quotes to say how could he have said he should die so it is very very irrational and so illogical 
So God could not have done that. So he did not come to die. And if Jesus came to die for our sins, maybe if Adam and Eve never sinned against, you know, if they never went against God's command, there might not have been a need for him to have come to die for the sins of humanity. So now they are saying, you know, the consequence of that sin、uh, is that Eve would give birth to children in pains. But now, Christians who even accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, many of them are even dying during childbirth. And they are all still experiencing pains during childbirth. So, how come Jesus came to die? Why? What is the effect? Now, God told Adam and said, Because you've done this, all the days of your life, you shall eat from your sweat. Now, but we still have to work before we eat. Why is Jesus Christ not paying any Christian salary? Once they believe that he's a l o r d and personal savior and he came to die for their sins. Moreover, the s a i d Jesus Christ is that a personal savior. I'm talking about stuff that led me to Islam. The s a i d Jesus Christ is the Lord and personal savior. And、uh, in the book of Isaiah 43, verse 10 to 11, God said, You are my witness and my servant whom I have chosen. Before me, no God was formed. Not even Jesus, not even the Holy Spirit. After me, no God will be formed. Not even Jesus, not even the Holy Spirit. I, even I, the Lord, I am the Lord, and there is no Savior except me. If God could have said that He is the Lord and there is no Savior except Him, then from what basis are Christians calling Jesus Christ their Lord and personal Savior when it is nowhere? To、uh, be found in、uh, the Bible of、uh, the Christians. So I started to study, you know, and、uh, when I came across the Quran, verse that says,、uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, all who are law who I had, say that、e、Allah is one, He is not two, He is not three. And when I may call a who, who for one I had, and to Him, He is, he, 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 you know, He has no equivalent. And、uh, I looked at it and、uh, I shared the book of Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, where Moses also said, Yea, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The same thing was said by Jesus Christ in the book of Mark 12, verse 29, that Yea, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Same thing called Who Allah I had. He Allah is one. That says that no one in the entire Christian's Bible before Jesus Christ believed in the concept of Trinity. Was Abraham wrong? Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, were they all wrong not to have believed or not to have taught the concept of a Trinity? So, coming down to how we worship, yeah, I said about the Bible the other time. All Qurans we have in the world today, they all consist of. 114 chapters from Surah Al Fatih to Surah Al Nas. The same numbers of chapters, and we have the Arabic text in them. So we can easily check if maybe anyone is trying to be dubious, you know, mischievous, and deceptive. So, but the Bible s today, we have so many versions of the Bible, and this Bible in them, we have so many anachronisms, discrepancies, contradictions, and errors. Errors to say. So now, coming back to our mode of worship, we Muslims we worship Allah five times daily, and、uh, that is our salah. And、uh, I began to imagine that, okay, if we claim that Islam is the only religion acceptable by、uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so why is it then that many previous prophets you know, were not Muslims? But after I had proper research, I find out that, oh, so these people they practice Islam and they submitted in oneness to Allah and、uh, they bow down to Him in worship. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al b a j i n a Allah says,、uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Wa ma umiru illa li ya'budu Allah mukhlisina lahu dina hunafa. حنفاء ويقيم الصلاة ويؤت الزكاة 
وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةِ Here Allah says that they, the previous people, have also not been asked to do anything, but to believe in the oneness of Allah, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, like uh, uh, Moses did, you know. He said in Deuteronomy 4 that, Here, yeah, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The same thing Jesus Isa did also. And again, ask them to perform salah. Yeah, there was no one, no prophet in the entire Christian Bible that worshipped God by dancing, clapping, singing, striking, you know, and jumping. Even David who sang, it only did that to praise God, not worship God. Because there's a difference between worship and praise. And that is what is missing in the entire Christian, uh, in Christendom today to say. So when we go to church and uh, you want to praise God, you know, you do that with drumming and dancing. And then you say, thank you, Jesus, the owner of my soul. You go like that. And then if you want to worship, you say, you are worthy, O oh Lord. And then you are still praising. You are not even worshiping. I can praise someone. Oh, that girl. Oh, that sister is beautiful. Mashallah. Wow. Subhanallah. You are intelligent. You 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 are creative and all that you know that is praising someone but that does not make me worship that person so today the concept of worship is missing in christendom a, a whole lot now in the book of matthew chapter 4 verse uh, 8 to 10 the bible says after jesus christ after satan took jesus to an exceedingly high mountain this on its own is you know fallacious what lie fallacious to say because how could satan you know take jesus christ a prophet of god or in their own definition god to say to an uh exceedingly high mountain how could he why should god follow satan he created so satan has said to jesus he showed jesus christ the all kingdoms of the world which is an error to say because there is no way that Jesus Christ or Satan could have seen the whole kingdoms of the world from that even when you stay on Mount Everest you cannot see the next 200 kilometers how so he said to Jesus Christ the whole kingdoms of the world and then he said to Jesus Jesus I will give you all this if only you will bow down and uh, worship me Subhanallah. How come Satan could have tempted Jesus with what he owned? You know, this belongs to Jesus Christ according to the definition. He created it. He is God. He is God in flesh. He came to die for our sins. You know, everything on earth and in heavens belongs to Jesus Christ. So, how come someone could have tempted me with what is mine and I have power and control and authority over? So, he now said, I will give you all these things, all these things, if only you will bow down and worship me. That is where I'm going to now. If only you will bow down, bow down and worship me. The devil wanted to be like God. He wanted to take, you know, the glory that belongs to God. And they say, if only you will bow down and worship me. Were it to be that bowing down to God in worship is wrong, Jesus Christ could have said, get behind me, Satan. It is only by dancing, singing, twinkling, and jumping. That is the only way one could have worshipped God. But no, Jesus Christ never said that. He now said, no, get behind me, Satan. It is only the Lord your God you must bow down and worship too. Even Satan himself knows the truth. If clapping, singing, and dancing is the proper way to worship and praise God, Jesus Christ, uh, Satan could have taken, you know, brought drum set you know and all musical instruments and asked jesus you know to sing or dance for him but no he never did and then so jesus christ now bowed down to god in the book of matthew 20 verse 39 the same way moses did the same way aaron did they all bowed down to god in worship they never clapped they never danced they never sang to worship god so there is a great difference between praise and worship and this is what christendom does not have so differences in worship you know, the way they redeem worship is not the same way the Catholic churches worship or the way the Protestant worship itself is different. Not to talk about how the, you know, Catholics worship or the Ethiopian churches, you know, 
claim to worship. Meanwhile, they are not even worshiping the least. They are only engrossed in praises. So they do not worship. So, you know, these are points. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I was like, yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, Allah says, uh, إِذَا جَاءَ نَسْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Alhamdulillah, Allah, thousands of years ago, Allah promised, you know, that a day is coming, you know, that people will come to Islam in multitudes. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I am proud to be a Muslim, to be a part of, you know, the Muslim world, you know, to be a part of those who will bow down, you know, in, submi in uh, submission to Allah. They are, you know, happy to be one of those who believe in the oneness of Allah and accept the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as uh, the seal of all Prophets, you know, the best of mankind, you know, and, uh, and uh, a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I, I, I am glad that I am not one of those who fabricate a lie against Allah saying he has begotten his son as Allah says Lam yalid wa lam yulade. he Allah begot not neither was he begotten you know and I, 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 I am happy that I, I, I am a part of people you know who call towards Allah's path you know and moreover, sensitizing the Muslims because uh, many Muslims today, they seem to be ignorant of uh, what they're practicing. And uh, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to, you know, grant us uh, knowledge and continues to guide us. So Alhamdulillah, 2013, I embraced Islam. I publicly uh, pronounced the Kalima to Shahada. Ashadu Allah illa illa shadana Muhammadu abdu wa rasooluhu Alhamdulillah So since then I So Alhamdulillah I, I, I have been a Muslim uh, For the past four years And still going And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Makes me die as a, a Muslim Indeed anyone who dies Not as a Muslim Is indeed one of the losers Wallahi indeed one of the losers You know And uh, Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah says, Inna alayna al huda, that guidance belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And uh, I know that it was not my doing to, to have uh, this guidance. As uh, Allah says, uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Liman sha'a minkum an yastaqim. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ That indeed, no one will be able to walk straight except he who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, permits or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, Islam is a religion that, you know, teaches peace and uh, uh, I am glad to be part of a community that you know sensitizes the general public that islam uh, you know does not in any way teaches violence you know islam does not teaches you know terrorism and uh, muslims are not terrorists because uh, we really need to talk because in a world where people see you with beards or in your niqab or hijab and uh, they want to oppress and victimize you or they see you and uh, they start giving you the terrorist tag so it is really important that we continue to sensitize them so the superiority of islam over other world religions is not something that can be said in an hour or even in two three hours to say it it, it cannot because islam is it, uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as said by allah is indeed a mercy to mankind you know bringing the pagan arabs you know out of their error and uh, bringing them to the light of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, making them, you know, to see that indeed Allah is a uh, is one, one He begot not, and uh, neither was He begotten. So before I go off, inshallah, I would just want to have a word for uh, other reverts to uh, Islam. You know, this is a uh, the Deen, and uh, this is the religion of Allah. And Wallahi, Allah says, "But to al hayat dunya." 
wal akhiratu khairun wa abqa wallahi allah says that indeed we love this world so much but the year after is indeed better for us so even when you revert to islam you know it is yeah it happens you know i was with a revert you know for yesterday with a brother so she was talking to us and telling us that you know uh mother is kind of victimizing her so she cannot even not even the hijab she cannot even wear a scarf so the mother had to call her outside and say hey, you come out here and uh, take off your scarf so people can see you you know it's really an oppression it's really an oppression and uh, in a world where people want to do good and uh, you know they want to get covered and they get fined for that they get oppressed and but well, people go no get naked and uh, you know they get celebrated so uh we cannot thank allah you know we cannot be doing too much if we keep thanking allah for guidance so for our rivers and people who come to islam uh it is just normal you know to face difficulty and that's why allah says do you think you say you believe without being tested so allah says uh ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri was salah inna allah ma'a sabirin that indeed all you will believe seek uh help with allah with patience and uh, prayer indeed allah is with the patient uh, allah also says that we, you will be tested with uh you will tested with loss of life you know you tested with fear with poverty with hunger and all that and allah says wa bashiru sabirin wa bashiru sabirin alladhina idha asabathum musibatun qalu qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un indeed give blood tidings to the patient you know those who were afflicted you know they say to from allah we come and to him is our return so as a revert yeah like every normal person bad things you know happen to anyone but you know when bad things happen to you as a revert you know people make many out of that and uh, they make many out of that they start to tell you that this happened because you reverted august 6 i had an accident you know whilst uh, going to madrasa in nakure uh yeah, in nakure so on the state I, i i had an accident that may you know made me unconscious for about seven days and uh, i could not even remember the uh last four hours before the accident you know i ended up having to see the orthopedic the neurosurgeon the ophthalmologist the otologist the uh physiotherapist too so uh, alhamdulillah I, i i was not worried in any way because even if i was not a muslim that could have happened and five people died in the accident and they were not muslims so i came on facebook to see comments you know to see articles from you know christians saying oh i hope jesus uh, lucas bashir we miss uh, we meet jesus christ like paul did you know and the comments like that saying yeah well allah should have saved him but well they died and you have nabi quresh who is a you know christian apologist who has to make cancer since last year he died this year and uh you just wonder why people just make you know they just give what whatever happens to you a definition so yeah now if lucas bashir had died and uh, nabi quresh was alive so jesus christ saved nabi quresh and uh, allah could not have saved uh you know lucas bashir so uh, alhamdulillah so we are uh, for those who want to embrace islam just know that you know calamity and uh, every other things you know that humans do not want they are just natural phenomenon they are just natural phenomenon and uh, these are things that happen to anyone irrespective of your faith and uh, even when bad things happen to us we cannot just but the, the, the only thing we could have just be doing is be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ex- and uh, pray that he uses them you know to cleanse uh, our sins for that is better wallahi that is really indeed better so uh, alhamdulillah so one word also to the liberals and to the extremists to say uh for a while now i have joined some brothers in you know writing against the you know, liberalism and the extremism you know allah says lakum dinukum wal yadin so that uh your religion to you and their religion to them but some people do not want to live by this or lie uh the extremist yeah and uh, the liberals they are brothers in that you cannot be a liberal person and you cannot be an extremist without distorting or going away from the fundamental teachings 
of uh, the religion. So if you study Islam from an extremist or you study Islam from uh, uh, a liberal person, you will end up, you know, uh, misquoting or um, uh, seeing the uh, Muslim as someone who is a fanatic or who is liberal. So when you, for example, uh, coming to the issue of Christmas, Allah says, Lakum dinukum wal yadin. Your religion to you, dears to dears. This does not mean compromise. It is the highest form of religion, uh, religious tolerance that you know any religion could preach. Meanwhile, no religion even teaches this. So now the Christians are celebrating their Christmas. You know, as a Muslim, yours is to stay in your home. But a, a liberal person will go there to fight them. Oh no, sorry. A liberal person will go there to celebrate with them. So if he goes there to celebrate with them, a Muslim that stays in its house without celebrating with them would be seen as an extremist. So if an extremist goes there, he will go there to kill them because they are celebrating a pagan festival. And then if you now study Islam from this extremist that goes to kill them, you know, you see that Muslim that does not kill them as a liberal person. And then you, you begin to hear the term moderate Islam or mo a moderate Muslim. There's nothing like moderate Muslim because Islam itself is moderate by nature. So Islam is such a religion that makes a balance between uh, extremism and liberalism. Like I said the other time, you know, when you study Islam from the liberal, you see the Muslim as an extremist. And uh, when you study Islam from a, a from an extremist, you see the Muslim as a uh, liberal. The same way it balances, you know, the equation between liberalism and uh, extremism, the same way it balances the equation between life and death. A Muslim is not, you know, anxious to die because he does not know what he will definitely uh, see in uh, uh, when he gets to the grave, you know. So a Muslim is not so crazy about this dunya and neither is he so crazy to die. So it maintains a balance, a real balance. You know, why would someone even be uh, anxious to die when uh, when Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَجِيءَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَ That on that day, when hell is brought near, you know, a man will remember, but what is the remembrance, you know, going to profit him? So in a situation where you're dead and uh, you cannot seek repentance again, so why should you be anxious to die? So that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there are just two reasons why we are alive. One, to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and to do more good deeds. As Allah says in Quran 51, verse 56, that I have not created mankind and jinns but to uh, worship me alone. Inshallah, I will be going off in the next five minutes. So if we have any question now, please let me know. So if there's any question, please type out your question so I will uh, answer the question before going off, inshallah. So uh, let me continue. So as Muslims, we should be a good, you know, representative of Islam. And, uh, in, in, you know, when we, when we even compromise our faith, it, 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 it brings more harm, you know, to the religion. And even it even brings more harm to the Muslims, wallahi, because the Muslims who are practicing Islam uh, based on the Quran and Sunnah with the understanding of the powers of predecessors, you know, they will be seen as liberals or they will be seen as uh, extremists and uh, it is really, 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 really frustrating to say. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to, you know, guide us and, uh, you know, not lead us astray. Uh, indeed, uh, Allah guides those whom he wills and uh, he leads astray who he wills also. Though Allah does not change the condition of the people, except they change what is in their hearts. And Allah does not misguide, except the deviant, deviant the disobedient. Taking the case of uh, Fir'aun as an uh, example, who even lay claim to be the, uh, their God. May Allah uh, save us from uh, may Allah save us from our uh, disbelief, inshallah. So also, uh, Muslims really need to learn how to you know check up on rivers and uh, stand with rivers because there are so many rivers out there who have been oppressed and victimized for their faith you know even be a river one year two years three years ten years you know it still keeps going 
You see someone you've not seen in 10 years and then he sees you with beards and that. He, he says how are you and I say Alhamdulillah and then he does something and I say Subhanallah. You know like that. So it's, it's, it's you know it, you, it, it just looks at you again. That's even after 10 years. So you know they need Muslims to be with them you know. Support them you know physically, morally, spiritually, even financially because there are some whose school fees have you know not been paid because they have a uh, they embrace Islam. So, Sister Rodia Muslima, she asked a question. She said, How have you been able to cope with the pressure, either internal or external? Well, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I can say that it, uh, it has not been easy, you know, uh, this year to say. But, uh, like I do say, uh, this religion cannot be practiced uh, on ignorance. Seriously, it is a religion that cannot be practiced on ignorance. So one of those things I did then, by the way, one of those things I did, by the way, was, you know, taking my time to study the religion. You know, I studied the religion. And uh, so if I want to say that I believe in Allah, so why do I believe in Allah? So if you say Allah is not God, okay, okay, what is Allah, okay? What, okay, how about that name? Okay, can I defend this name if I say I believe it? Okay, if you tell me Allah is a moon god, okay, uh, okay, how would I answer? Is Allah truly a moon god? Okay, let me read. Okay, is Allah a moon god? And then you know, I get to see them. Oh, okay, how come Allah is a moon god? When you know, you have to pay for a jewel, you know, you have to pay Zur and Asru, you know, when the moon is not even out. So, how do you worship a moon god when, <laughs> when the sun is out, you know, like that? And uh, and uh, you know, say ah, Allah is a pagan and like, a pagan god like that. And the same pagan god, you know, that is asking people to do it with uh, idolatry like that. And uh, people continue to say, oh, it is, yeah, the, the, uh, the Quran is a book from Shaitan. You know, the prophet was this was a madman like that. You know, like Allah was uh, standing up for the prophet when I say, oh, man, saw he be my genuine. You know, that he was not mad. So. It goes, okay, the Quran, okay, what's the body Quran? How is, is, is the Quran is anyway superior? Yeah, indeed it is. So, you know, study, just study, study the religion and just stand up for, for what you really believe in. And at a point in time, instead of fighting and, you know, being violent, you know, you can just go that way of, uh, you know, dialogue. So, okay, you, you, you think I'm a terrorist. Okay, fine. Well, I am not disagreeing with you. But why do you think I am a terrorist? Because you think the Quran supports terrorism? Where is it in the Quran? Quran 532 says that anyone who kills a civil has killed the whole of mankind. So, and then, so how, 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 you know, how should people, you know, like that? So, studying the religion, uh, your second question, Sister Rodia, I mean, it amazes me how you have been able to master this religion, how much you have learned, how much knowledge you have acquired. How have you been able to achieve all this? Yeah, I, it's, it, it, it's a commitment, a commitment and a dedication. Because uh, as Allah says, even when referring to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he says, uh, You know, that year after is better for him than this uh, present life. So, you know, and uh, Allah says again, sorry, Allah says, Al haakumu takathur. That the, uh, that the mutual rivalry of finding up the good things of uh, this world has, uh, you know, shifted our attention, you know, from the most serious things. So people, yeah, people want to practice, people want to know about the religion, but, you know, they want to walk, they want to do this, they want to acquire some, so many things, and uh, then they just have misplaced priorities. So they have not been really able to, you know, commit their time or dedicate their time to you know, practice the religion. But then, uh, one of those things that, well, well it, it all just, you know, boils down to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, because he indeed guides whoever uh, uh, he wills. So, you know, then I was like, I'm embracing a religion. So I am living a religion because I was born in this religion. And uh, I, when I started to, you know, get conscious of what the religion teaches, I started to question it. So if I'm embracing a religion, then I should be able to, you know, Question what it says also, you know, okay, this is what you want me to believe, okay, okay, let me see. You think the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam came from God, or you were, or was a messenger of God? How? Oh, can you give me points? Okay, these are convincing evidences, okay, fine, this is it. So, you know, 
people just need to learn. People cannot just be gullible. People cannot be gullible. People cannot just be dogmatic. People cannot just, you know, practice things based on uh, what they uh, hear or what they see people doing. Else, one would get engulfed in bidah and uh, also things that are not even related to the religion. You know, when you practice a religion based on whims and desires and uh, ignorance, especially when you're even arrogant in ignorance. So, how can someone be able to just know anything beneficial about uh, the religion? So, alhamdulillah, I, I, I think I, I, I don't see myself, by the way, as seeing anything, as, as knowing anything, you know, when you said how much knowledge you've acquired. Yeah, yeah I, I, I just think I have been studying because this is Islam and where you see the likes of, you know, uh, uh, Sheikh Albani, Sheikh Ibn Thaymin and all those, you know, when you get to see their works, even when you even see the likes of uh, Mufti Menk, you know, you get to see the likes of uh, Dr. Sharafadim, Gwadibo, you know, and, you know, so many of them like that. And uh, when you continue to see them and then you look at your teachers, you look at those teaching you, you know, so you cannot just even say, okay, because you, you know, maybe uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can read some words in Arabic, you know, you can speak Arabic, you know, a bit and I think maybe you've been, you've got knowledge. So because when you know, you know like that. So when you see your teachers and uh, the more you learn, the more you learn, the more you know you don't know. That's just it. So I don't see myself as someone who knows. I, I do and say and write things based on what, you know, uh, a fact, like a factual to say, based on evidences given by the scholars and uh, maybe with the little that I think I have known and uh, based on the arguments I've had before I embrace the religion because I think I questioned every part of the religion before I embrace it and uh, before I would even agree with any part of the religion. Now, you know, it has to come with, you know, convincing evidences and not what someone tells me. This is what must have been attested, you know, or this is what, what, what must have been, you know, stamped by the scholars of the religion based on the Quran and uh, the Sunnah of uh, the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So once, so since I've started to study, yeah, maybe at some point in time, you know, when you don't really know much, you start thinking, oh, wow, I, I am a scholar of the religion. Yeah, I know, but... Once you begin to see people, you know, who have knowledge about the religion, you know, and you begin to see books, you know, you see the books in front of you and see how many books of fiqh, of aqidah, of you know, the sharia that you have to learn. <laughs> you just see yourself as uh, knowing nothing, even when those people say or think that you know nothing. You just know that, oh no, it's common. You know, what you know is not just even one percent of what, you know, Islam is. But alhamdulillah, uh, been studying and uh, inshallah. I'll keep studying the religion because we cannot even stand up for the religion based on ignorance. While we ignorant and uh, we want to stand up for the religion, but we end up taking people away from the religion instead of, uh, you know, bringing people to the religion or uh, teaching them what the religion says. And uh, uh, as a comparative lecturer, you know, you cannot compare something that is one. So you compare two or more things together. So when you want to compare Islam and Christianity and you know about Christianity alone, and then you are asked about the Quran and you don't know about it, you don't know anything about Islam. So how would you able to how would you able to defend Islam? Or how would you able to call yourself a, a comparator? So it is just important to study Islam. Else if you don't know Islam and you want to talk about Bible, you want to talk about the Shintos, about the Hindus, about the Buddhists, you will end up talking about it successfully. And then when the question about the religion, you have nothing to offer. So uh, I think uh, I have to go. Uh, it's it's nice being here, uh, alhamdulillah, and thanks to Brother Muhammad Al Bashari. Uh, say Jazakum Law Khairan, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala make us die as Muslims, submitting to the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.